it's Joe and Lisa with Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the farm and to the channel. <laughs> We're here today in Conversation Corner and we want to talk to you about how safe is it to live in Ecuador? There's been a lot of questions lately. We've had a little rash of robberies and uh, as COVID came through and the pandemic shut things down, um, when you're living in an impoverished area, more poverty happens. Yeah, and you know, almost two years, these, a lot of these people couldn't work. And when you're rural like this, you know, the job opportunities are even less. And so that does turn a lot of people to crime in ways that they can, you know, try to make a quick buck. So we don't want to make light of what's happened here in Vilcabamba. You know, um, no one's been killed. Um, in in uh, years before we came, some people were shot. There was couple of different deals. One of them involved some drugs. One of them was a friend of mine that had just broke in his house, shot him. He shot him back, I think. <laughs> but uh, um, so he's fine. And um, we, we haven't heard of any murders here locally at all. Mm -hmm. um, there may have been many years ago, um, but, but we haven't heard of it. Uh, there are in Ecuador a lot of uh, homicides right now because of the, uh, the gang violence in Quito and in Guayaquil and um, in the prisons. So it drove our numbers up a little bit because the prisons here, you know, there's like 119 prisoners, you know, killed each other in one day in one prison. Oh yeah, and, that's when they had the riots in the prisons. Yeah, yeah. so that affects the homicide rate. Yeah. Um, traditionally, Ecuador is much more peaceful than the United States and uh, there's a lot less crime here than there is in uh, North America. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, a lot of people come and they're worried about the crime, but um, in the bigger cities, you have to be a little more cautious, cautious when you're walking around. Um, and you should always be cautious, no matter where you are in the world. But if I'm walking around in Vilcabamba, I don't feel like um, my life's at risk or um, anything's going to happen. I mean, Vilcabamba's smaller. So you kind of know everybody. Yeah, and you know, before we came to Ecuador, we got rid of watches and jewelry and stuff. And, we did. Um, one, we just don't want to be looked at as rich gringos. Um, we're not rich. And nope. We're certainly uh, more well-to-do than many Ecuadorians, and we understand that. So we try to keep things, um, you know, as low-key as possible. Uh, you'll never see us with rings and things like that walking yeah. around. We just don't do it. Um, it's just a wise practice to not flaunt your bling um, yeah. in, in the bigger cities and things. Um, I know people who've had their cell phones snatched out of their backpack, but I have to tell you, I was with a friend in Loja one day, and his backpack, the zipper on it was broke, and a young Ecuadorian man stopped us mm -hmm. and said, Sir, sir, you're about to lose your cell phone. It's hanging out of your backpack. Yeah. So, you know, what a nice, honest guy. It's just like anywhere else in the world. There's good people. There's bad people. Yeah. Um, and avoid the areas where there's bad people. Yeah. There's some specific areas in Quito. You can talk to your hotel um, managers there. They'll, they'll advise you where not to go. Same thing with Guayaquil. Um, there's a river area that's still pretty safe, but there's lots of areas in Guayaquil you do not want to be in. Yeah. Um, it's just uh, a lot of crime, a lot of cartel activity, gang activity kind of thing. Sure. Sure. You don't want to be in the uh, the 20 meter zone between Ecuador and uh, Colombia. That's considered a no go zone, and so you don't want to be anywhere along there, along that border. It's a very very dangerous place to be. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, it's like it is anywhere else in the world. Although I think here, probably I still feel a little safer here than you know, and other places. Yeah, that's true. I mean, in Texas, I never went anywhere without a gun on my hip. Mm. And uh, so we don't do that here. Um, it would be illegal. And so that's that's not what happens here. Um, we do want to give you some practical advice, though. If you're visiting Ecuador, keep your valuables locked up in the hotel safe. Mm. Um, don't leave things out where, you know, you're going to entice, um, you know, maybe a cleaning person to to steal from you. Well, that's it. It's it's uh, most of the crime is usually crimes of opportunity. Yeah. So if you 
put it in front of somebody. They even, you know, on a bad day, a semi-honest person may take it for you. That's true. Um, we do, you know, hear the stories here about, well, a person had a housekeeper that worked for them who told the taxi driver about the items in your home and taxi driver uh, sent his guys to rob that person. So uh, just be careful who you have in your house and what yeah. you, you allow them to see. And uh, they mostly are going after fast cash things like electronics and cell phones and TVs, you know, sometimes. Well, we've heard of crimes in town. If you leave your door open and you leave your computer beside your door in open view, chances are somebody may walk by and help you get rid of that. Yeah, you may take care of that for you. Mm -hmm. We do have some neighbors, you know, a couple miles away that um, were robbed in the middle of the night and tied up and, uh, you know, very traumatizing experience for them. Um, we understand they had a lot of workers on the property at the time. Yeah. And so they probably got scoped out that way. And, uh, well, and even the police. So we've got a new police group in town. And they've been really Johnny on the spot going after uh, these criminals, and they've gotten quite a few of them. Um, but even they are saying, be careful of the people you invite to your home. And so this is, too, when we were researching Ecuador, um, one of the things that was interesting is an Ecuadorian doesn't always just invite you into their home. Um, be the same, because... Uh, you don't really know somebody unless they're like your really good friend, but you don't always really know who they are. And it's not really that person. It's the friends of that person that you may need to worry about. That's exactly right. And, you know, the housekeeper may have been an innocent thing. She told the cab driver and never expected something bad to happen to you. But True. Um, they're going to be those people who are opportunists anywhere in the world. So, you know, use your common sense and, um, you know, situational awareness is very important when you're walking around cities. Make sure um, someone's not following you. Um, one of the tricks they use here is they'll come and spill mustard on the back of your shirt and then want to help you clean it up while you're distracted. Somebody's lifting your wallet or your if, cell phone. If they're spilling something on you and they have things to clean you up with. Run away. <laughs> yeah question what they're doing. Now, we've never had a problem. We've mm -hmm. been in Machala. We've been in, um, you know, Cuenca many, many times in Cuenca, mm -hmm. walked all over Cuenca. We've never had a problem, but we're also very situationally aware. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's not, don't walk in fear because you don't want to live in your own personal prison, but um, just be aware of where you are and who's around you. And if you walk down the wrong street, turn around and go the other way. So I want to talk a little bit about something called the Global Peace Index. I watched Andrew Henderson, the nomad capitalist, talk about this, and I'm going to put a link in the description box below uh, to that video so you can watch it. But um, I looked it up on the Global Peace Index. Pretty interesting. So they, they measure a lot of things, you know, homicide rates, everything, to decide which are the safest countries in the world. So Ecuador is ranked 79th. Um, it was 83rd, so they've actually moved up a little bit in the ranking, mm -hmm. which is pretty good. The U.S. is 129th, so the U.S. is way down the list in terms of safe countries. So um, yeah. that number right there is pretty significant. And the U.S. is worldwide 0.03%. Um, We've had a, a decrease in safeness of 0.03% worldwide. Um, the U.S. has had a much higher percentage um, they're going the wrong way. Um, Ecuador seems to be uh, really bad right now, but overall, I, it may be going back the right way soon, we hope. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd say it's really bad, but, you know, in comparison to where we were a couple of years ago. But um, we've heard a lot about politicians letting their prisoners out to let them go across the borders into another country. And when you do that, you're, you're just going to have problems all the way around. The prisons here are a really, really bad place and, you know, a lot of overcrowding and the gangs run the prisons pretty much. Um, so, yeah, they, you know, during COVID let a bunch of them out and uh, that was not a good thing. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens, you know, politically here. 
and how that turns. We feel extremely safe, but we take a lot of precautions in we always have, even when we lived in Texas. Yeah, and I will say there's a lot of people coming to town. They're um, leaving their home country and moving to Ecuador. Um, and they're buying property way out of town or um, up a mountain. And just because you buy a piece of property doesn't mean that you have security built in. You have to add your security. There are safer countries to live in than Ecuador, but it'd be like, you know, Switzerland um, and, you know, someplace we couldn't afford to live. Mm. And so uh, that's completely out of the question. For where um, we want to live with the climate that we want, Ecuador is still number one for us. In yeah. all the boxes that we had ticked, it's still there for us. It is. It is. But we've created a little list here of how to stay safe in Ecuador. So we want to kind of go down this list. So you want to... Number one. Let's just go right to number one. Avoid the high crime areas, okay. you know, of Quito, the 20-meter exclusion zone. And quite frankly, I'd avoid why I kill all together. I don't know why anybody want to go there. But, you know, there's a lot of great shopping and stuff there. So I get that. It's a big city. So big city, big city crime. And we mentioned don't flash your bling. No fancy watches and jewelry. Watch your cell phones. Watch all your bags. Backpacks are like... It's a neon light. Rob me, rob me. Mm -hmm. um, well, I would say just really be conscientious um, with everything you have. Like my purse is small enough that I can carry it in the front and my hand can stay on my purse. So, and it's got a double wrapper zipper thing in it. So it um, it's it's secure, but I don't take my cell phone out and flash it around. I don't. You know, if you pay for something, only pull out enough money to pay for what you're paying for. And just don't flash it around. Don't let them see the cash. Mm. Um, I keep a small wallet in my front pocket. I no longer carry a wallet in my back pockets. And yeah. better for your back anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we do that. Um, and here's another one. Don't buy drugs. Um, That's a big one. Many foreigners come here and they get caught up in a drug deal and get robbed and um, you know, that's bad. The other thing that happens is foreigners come here traveling on vacation, whatever, and they get into a drug deal and they get arrested and thrown in prison here. Mm -hmm. Again, prison here is not a place that you want to be. No. It's, it's a bad, bad place. Uh, I've talked to people who've been to prison here. Not a lot of fun. Yeah. So um, here's another thing. Don't hike alone. This one comes up a lot because there's a lot of hiking trails here. And we meet a lot of young people that come to town and they just believe it's all good to hike by themselves. Yeah, there's a lot of young uh, idealistic backpackers. Oh, I've traveled the world. I'm at one with the world and I have no problem. Well, I promise you, you know, young female hiking by the river here at night, you're going to get robbed at a minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you could be raped even. Yeah. Uh, we also tell people, don't go to hike on Mandango Mountain alone. No. That's a really bad thing to do. There's guys up there with machetes who like to take your stuff from you. And um, yep. the other reason you don't want to hike up there alone is people fall off of Mandango all the time. They do. And hurt themselves, get killed. So always go with a group of people, you know, at least three or four. And um, don't take all your valuables with you. No, definitely don't take your valuables. But we've heard stories about people hiking up there and yeah. shimmying across a path on their belly. Not, a Not good for thing. me. <laughs> so, um, you know, the other thing is when you're traveling around Ecuador, um, keep a copy of your passport, a laminated. You want you want the, the page with your picture on it and the next page down. Yeah. Um, you don't have to have the page with your stamps. But if you take it and have it laminated front and back and carry that with you, Mm -hmm. And that's enough for the police transito type stops. Sure. Uh, you can't do banking or anything like that with it. No. But don't take your passport with you. Leave it in the hotel safe or, you know, leave it somewhere safe. So We've heard of a lot of people that have misplaced their passports. So yes. definitely keep it secure. And you can go to the embassy here and, and, and ask for an emergency passport. It, it's a hassle. Um, so don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's better not to have to do it. So we talked about using your common sense, situational awareness. That's important. Mm -hmm. Your home security. If you're going to live here, 
we taught this in Texas. I used to teach concealed licensed handgun classes. Um, and so we taught this there. You need to have layers of security. So um, the more deterrence you have in place, the more likely they are to go somewhere else and not pick on you. Right. And so there's a lot of things. I'm not going to mention everything, but motion lights, both solar operated and not, you know, mm -hmm. some of regular uh, power. And um, it's really a good idea to have fences, walls, you know, all those things are all good. Definitely have dogs. Definitely have dogs, yeah. Not a little lap dog. You need a protection One dog. One with a big loud voice. Yeah. Yes. So those are, dogs are a huge deterrent. Um, and so some people would argue, well, they'll poison your dogs. Well, that's true. But what they do is they poison them and then they'll come back the next night. So you find your dog's dead, you know you're going to get hit. Yeah. So, um, you know, I have no, I don't know anyone that I know of that's had their dogs poisoned and then they were robbed. Um, mm. It's possible, but I don't, I've never met anyone, yeah. but I've heard about it. So, you know, again, dogs are just a great, great uh, deterrent. Um, don't rely on the burglar bars you see everywhere. Uh, they yeah. come in and they get these, everyone has what's called a Beretta here. It's a big iron bar they use to dig with and pound stuff. They'll bring those Berettas or they'll use yours if it's out laying around. Yeah. And they'll just pop those burglar bars right off the wall. Well, there's two different kinds of burglar bars. There's the ones that are welded into your home, into the metal of your home. They're not going to pop those off. But the ones that they go and they just screw them in on the outside, yeah. those are easier to get off. They Just five seconds and they're, at, they're off and they're in your home. Yeah. So don't rely on those for protection. Here they call them bars of protection. Mm -hmm. um, it's window decoration. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know they're going to slow thieves down, but you need to have a safe room in your home where you hear somebody breaking in. You can go to that room and be pretty secure that they're not going to be able to get in that room. There's ways of doing that. These bank vault looking doors that they sell here, mm -hmm. um, and they're very inexpensive. Um, you know, have one of those installed have some drop down bars in your bedroom where they're not able to kick your door in. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do, but the main thing is if you're moving here, if you're moving out in the country or even somewhere close in the city, um, you need some level of protection. You need your layers of protection. So if they break in, what's gonna happen? Um, we see far too many people think that, well, if I just move further out, then I'll be okay. But that's really not true because you really want some neighbors around you to help protect your home along with dogs and other security means. So um, mm. you're just, you're not gonna be one with the world when they come knocking on your door um, in the middle of the night. Just like within Texas, I used to teach all the time, you need to have a plan. You need to exercise that plan so that you know what to do when something goes bump in the middle of the night. So um, we have, we've we had a plan everywhere we've lived. And so far, knock on wood, it's been able to keep us safe. And so, you know, part of that plan is in that safe room you have, we'd be at your bedroom, your bathroom, whatever it is, you need a cell phone in there. Um, you need uh, some neighbors that you've got pre-programmed in your phone that you can contact um, and, and so you can get help up there. Um, you also, what's a real good idea is to have sirens um, either installed on your home or we have these portable bullhorns that have sirens on them. They're mm -hmm. extremely loud. Portable bullhorn is great. They're real cheap. They're $67 here in Loja and they even have, um, you can put MP3s in there and have pre-recorded messages on there. Yeah, uh, and don't think that once you put everything in place that you think you're good, don't be afraid to change it. So as things happen around you, learn from what happened. And so learn what that person could have done differently and apply that to your own home. And if you're gonna have cameras, um, it's a great idea to have multiple systems. And what I mean by that is, if you just have a system that plugs into the wall, into the the power, they're going to cut your power and there goes your cameras. Mm. So having solar cameras um, in addition to those kind of cameras 
game trail cameras are extremely good. Yeah. Uh, they can be hidden and nobody would ever find them. Um, so um, having multiple camera systems, we have some solar backups here that we use. So mm -hmm. we're never without lighting. Yeah. Emergency lights on the property are coming on inside the house. And you can get all of that stuff here. So there's places in town Absolutely. that you can get it and, and secure your home. And a lot of people say, well, I don't have enough money. Well, I would do a little bit every month and um, cut back somewhere yeah. where you can um, apply some of the protection devices on your home. Yeah. And, and I mean, if you did everything that I'm talking about, you know, to the extreme, you probably wouldn't spend a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. So um, I think for four or five hundred dollars, you can put a lot of things in that would, would be a benefit. Yeah, a so, lot of it you can do after you buy a home. But if you're building a home, take these things into mind and build your home in such a way that you have more protection absolutely. Um, in your home. So, um, you know, we're telling you these things because we want it to be helpful information for you. Um, we don't want you to panic and think that, oh, this is a terrible country and no. um, I, I maybe I shouldn't live there. If you come here and you're going to hear some stories. Um, behind every story is a backstory. That's right. Um, we researched them all before we came. So every time something would happen, we checked and went a lot further into those events. Um, and just don't be a, don't be a prisoner in your home. I mean, that's not make, not. doesn't make it worth coming to Ecuador because it's a beautiful country. There are much more, I think, much more nice people than there are bad people. There's um, wonderful people here, and there's many Ecuadorians who will come to your defense. Mm -hmm. Our nearest neighbors are the Saraguro community, and they're indigenous, and so um, they will come to our defense in a heartbeat. They're lovely, wonderful people, yeah. um, good neighbors. A good neighbor is a good neighbor, yeah. and so you just need to make sure that you don't live so far out that you have no one there to help you, but if you do, make sure you put in a lot of security. You have a bueno vecino. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that about wraps it up. That's everything we have to say about it. We, we yeah. know, you know, you're probably going to hear some of these things yeah. and we want to give you our point of view on it. We still, I, I don't tend to, neither Lisa or I, like, we don't go out at night and do a whole bunch at night. We're just not real night people. No. Um, just if you do go out at night, understand where you're going to be going mm -hmm. and uh, have a plan, you know. Well, it's just, it's like in the States. Don't walk down the dark alley in the middle of the night alone. Don't yeah. do it here either. Um, you know, just happens. Don't get in a taxi cab at night where you don't know the driver or anything else. Um, if they head you down a dark alley and there's guys at the end of that alley waiting, um, you're going to be in big trouble. So, yeah. um, you know, we have our specific taxi drivers that we trust. We know, um, and those would be the guys that we would use. If we're in Quito, uh, we're going to be very careful. I would talk to the hotel manager where you're staying mm -hmm. and have them recommend someone who's going to get you there and back. Those hotels don't want bad publicity. They don't. So they're going to make sure that you get where you're going and back to the best of their ability. Yeah. And just use your common sense no matter where you are in the world. So be aware. Enjoy Ecuador. Yes. And uh, enjoy it for all it is. It's, it's a wonderful country. Um, anywhere you travel in the world these days, I think you have to be a little extra careful. Oh, for sure. The, the world is um, changing and we need to change with it. But at the same time, don't lose your freedom over it. I mean, enjoy life. Well, thank you for watching today. Thank you all for subscribing and we hope you'll give us a thumbs up on this video. If you have questions, leave them down below. We will answer them to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. We don't know the answer. We'll try to send you to someone who, who does know the answer. Yep. And uh, so see you on the next one. Ciao for now.